and welcome to Reading Between the Lines. I'm your host, The Water Dog, and today we're going to be looking at the discipline of animalism. This is my favorite discipline, and that's because it's a great combat discipline. It does a lot with retainers. It does a lot with Ender's Combat. And we're going to be looking at some of the cards that you may not be thinking about when you play with animalism, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. So, let's have a look at that first card. Our first card is Since the Savage Way. came out in Lords of the Night in 2007. There are currently 181 decks in the TWD database. And here we go. It says, requires a vampire with capacity above six. At the inferior, plus one intercept. At the superior, only usable, excuse me, usable only uh, by a locked vampire. This vampire unlocks and attempts to block. Okay. Now, Nosferatu and Gangrel decks. This is a really good card for them. Okay. Once again, you know, if I'm playing like my Sheldon, uh, Lord of the Clog deck, uh, but it, but any uh, but any um, you know high cap vampire uh, that you're going to have that has uh, animalism, this is a really good card for uh, because you know once again you can rely on cat's guidance for plus one intercept, but then you can get another plus one intercept with this. But it's also in the fact that you get to unlock, okay, and attempt to block, and so uh, you don't you know because like if you use it on the Q vi, you can only use one. Well, this you could use this, you know. Every time somebody does an action, you can simply use Sense the Savage Way and simply then unlock and attempt to block or attempt, you know, uh, to, to get into a combat situation. And so I like this card a lot, uh, you know, for basically to help me unlock. It's a great reaction card for that. And so it's a good combat card. Our next card is Pack Alpha. It's combat card. Came out in Kindred Most Wanted in 2005. There are currently 78 decks in the tournament winning database. It states uh, a vampire must play only one pack alpha each round. At the inferior, employ an animal retainer from your hand before range is determined. Pay cost is normal. At the superior, burn an animal retainer employed by this vampire and put this card on this vampire. The minion with this card gets plus one strength. A minion may have only one pack alpha. Now, what I like about this is this gives you a free action. So instead of having to take an action to put a retainer on your minion, okay, what you can do is you can take an action that gets yourself into combat or even a reaction that gets yourself into combat. And then that allows you then to simply put a retainer onto your minion. Okay, and what I like to put on there more than anything else is things like a, a murder of crows because that's another environmental damage. It kind of backs up carrying crows. So I got my carrying crows that can go up to two damage environmental. I got a murder of crows that can do one uh, environmental. So that's three environmental damage, which is really, really great. You know, elephant guardians, another good way of doing damage things. And so you get into a combat situation and you just boom. Okay, rock and roll. So I like that. Our next card is Shepherd's, Inter uh, Shepherd's Innocence. Uh, came out in Dark Sovereigns in 1995. Currently only 11 decks in the TWD database. Uh, plus one stealth action. At the inferior direct action, take control of a card in play that requires animalism. If it is an equipment or retainer card, place it on any vampire you control. At the superior, take control of all, ca all cards in play that require animalism. Place the equipment and retainer cards on any vampires you control. It's going to cost you two blood. Now, if I have a animalism deck, and by the way, I do, just ask my play group. They really, really don't like my animalism deck. And the reason is because it just does a lot of damage. But I put one Shepherd's Innocence. I don't think this is a card you put a whole lot of copies in, okay? Because you're not going to be going up against a lot of Animalism decks. But just to have one in the deck, this allows you to take Retainers. This allows you to take, you know, Murder of Crows. This allows you to take uh, Army of Rats. This allows you to take uh, Tear of Souls. Anything that's got Animalism on the field, it allows you to take, okay? Raven Spy. So if it's got animalism, you could take it, particularly at the superior. So at the superior is where I love it because then you can take it 
and then you can place those cards on any of the vampires you control. So you can, you know, if you take two Raven Spies, well, then you could put them on your vampires how, however you see fit. So it's a good action for that. Like I said, I only like it as a one of, okay? I only like it as a one of, but if you're playing a animalism specific discipline deck, I would put just at least one in there. I probably wouldn't go more than two, but definitely one for it. Yeah, absolutely. Our next card is Taunt the Caged Beast. It's an action card. Came out of Sword of Cain in 2007. There are currently only 31 decks in the TWD database. And this is what we call a water dog card. Oh yes, it's a water dog card. Uh, at the inferior, uh, direct enter combat with any vampire with an optional maneuver in that combat. At the superior, choose a vampire controlled by your predator and another controlled by your prey. Not usable when only one of the Methuselah is in the game. The chosen vampires enter combat. If only one is ready at the end of combat, he or she gains four blood. All right, why is this a water dog card? Okay. One of the things that I've seen a lot of people do uh, lately, is particularly when they're playing the, uh, uh, the combat decks and bleed decks that use animalism, is they have a heavy reliance on Deep Song. There's a heavy reliance on that. And me, I like to do multiple actions of combat. I don't like to, you know, do uh, to, uh, to have just simply one outlet of one card. So I like Taunt the Caged Beast. Because even your vampires at Inferior, if the action goes off, they get a maneuver. They get a maneuver. So that's the great thing about it. It gets a maneuver. And so it's going to force combat no matter what. That's the, <laughs> It's going to force combat no matter what. And if the action goes off, you get the maneuver. At the superior, okay, there's a chance, a possibility that you could have two vampires fight each other, okay? You know, so, you know, if I'm playing like a Nosferatu deck, which has a lot of stealth because it has Othuscape, and it has, of course, animalism, well, then I can do this where I can have my predator and prey fight each other. And so, I, I you know, that's another great thing about it. So, it's a fun card. I usually like to put anywhere from two to four of these cards in my deck uh, for that purpose. But the big thing is, is just it's a it's a it's a combat starter that at inferior I can use. It's a combat starter at inferior I can use. That's what's great about it. Doesn't cost me a blood either. Cost me no blood. Good card. Our last card is Drawing Out the Beast. It's combat cards. Been around since Jihad 1994. Currently only 79 decks in the TWD database. States only usable before range is determined on the first round frenzy. At the inferior, during this combat, opposing vampires get plus one strength, but he or she cannot use maneuvers to maneuver to long range, cannot use presses to end combat, and cannot use equipment. A vampire may play only one drawing out the beast each combat. At the superior, as above, and the opposing vampire takes one unpreventable damage during the press step each round. Now, this is a good combat card. And the first thing that you have to note about this card is, is the fact that uh, they can't maneuver to long range. You're forcing them to to be at the close range step and you're forcing them in particularly to basically use a hand strike. So they get the plus one strength, but you're forcing them to have to use hand strikes. The other thing is, is let's say you want the range at close and you don't mind them having the plus one strength. Okay. But you're taking away their advantage with things like, let's say weighted walking stick or baseball bat, or even more particular, like a singer dagger. Okay. All right. Or even an ivory bow. Okay. Uh, they can't use the equipment. So that to me is the it is the biggest bonus in here is that the equipment is null and void. And the second big thing is, is they have to stay at close. They can't maneuver to long. So if you take, for example, which is the greatest card in animalism history, <laughs> Aiden Bats, okay, where you can simply use that as a maneuver, they now cannot really strike you. And then you can then, you know, Use your aid for bats and do your damage, and then you can then press. They cannot press to end. You could press going to another round. You got carrying crows on the field, and it's just all over. Drawing out the beast basically 
stops the equipment, okay, and it prevents the maneuver. And so that's why I like it. It's probably my uh, favorite in animalism when it comes to, uh, you know, your pre-range combat cards, okay? When it comes to the pre-range combat cards, drawing out the beast is really, really, really good. That's it for animalism, man. Thanks a lot. You watched the whole video? <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Reading Between the Lines. I'm your host, The Water Dog, and if you like what you've been watching, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Y'all take care.